God bless you, everybody. Amen. Thank you for tuning in uh, tonight. Amen. Let's go to the word of the Lord. Uh, but before we do that, I want to just take a moment and say thank, thank you all for your patience on Sunday. Uh, we had some technical difficulties. You know how it is online. Uh, things occur that uh, we cannot con control, I should say. But uh, we're thankful that we're here tonight and that we're praying that the Lord will bless us tonight. Amen. Let's go to the word of the Lord. But before we do that, let's have a word of prayer. Bow your heads wherever you are. Father, thank you for your goodness and your mercy, your kindness, your benevolence towards us all. We love you so very much. Thank you for being a great dad to all of us. Lord, you've been better to us than we've been to even ourselves. And Lord, for that, we thank you. You are our father. You are our dad. You are our creator. You are our maker. And we love you and appreciate you so very, 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 very much. Now tonight, Lord, Grant us wisdom to teach the word of God. Without you, we can do nothing, Lord. Amen. You are the great teacher of the church, so teach your church tonight. And Lord, grant your church the wisdom. Give them the grace to hear tonight, not just with their outer hearing, but with their inner ears. We thank you for it even now. In the name of Jesus, all God's people say amen. All right, I'm in the book of Acts, the 15th chapter. I'm in a study entitled Strife, the Instrument of Sabotage. Strife, the Instrument of Sabotage. And I think this is a very, very important conversation that we're having. We'll read first and then uh, we'll begin to talk. Amen. If you don't have pencil and paper, notepad or and a pen, uh, go ahead and get yourself prepared for that because we're going to be moving kind of swiftly tonight because I want to make up some ground. Uh, there's, I have a timing mechanism in me to get certain things into you because I want to move on to the next thing. But I'm not going to rush. I want the Holy Spirit to have his way. So in the book of Acts, the 15th chapter, the 36th verse says, And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from, from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. And the contention, that word contention is big, and the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas to de departed and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. Amen. So we're talking about strife, the instrument of sabotage. Let's backtrack a little bit because I want to show you something. <clears throat> Go on back to chapter 13, please. Acts chapter 13 and verse 2. Notice what it says in verse 2. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. So we see that the Holy Ghost called Barnabas and Saul, amen, praise the Lord, in chapter 13. So this separation that took place in chapter 15 was not authorized by the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. It was not authored by God, praise the Lord, amen. What, what authored this was some level of strife, amen. And so I want to recapitulate some of the things that uh, we covered in our last session. Praise the Lord. And I think it's going to be very, very important for you to tune in tonight. I want you to hear, Pastor, very clearly tonight because the Lord has given me a word to give you that I believe is going to bless you. Praise the Lord. We said strife hinders your prayers. So strife is not to be played with. Praise the Lord. Growing up in the body of Christ, I didn't hear much conversation about strife. I've heard it mentioned, but I had gotten no in-depth teaching on the subject. Praise the Lord. And uh, I think that many of us would testify the same. And as a result, we've just not uh, been as careful 
as we should or could have been. But listen to Pastor tonight, because strife hinders your prayers from being answered, halts your prosperity, and impairs your ability to receive revelation knowledge from God. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, I'm recapitulating. Paul says, <clears throat> we are not ignorant, he says, of Satan's devices. Amen. Lest he should get an advantage over us. Because he is as a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. And I think that's very, very important for you to understand that if you ignore how Satan operates, you can be severely damaged in the body of Christ, if not destroyed. So we're learning that anytime Satan wants to sabotage anything, a business, amen, uh, if he wants to sabotage your marriage, sabotage a relationship between you and your spouse, Amen. Sabotage anything, he uses strife to do it. And it's a very clever plan by the adversary. Because truth be told, most people in the body of Christ do not understand strife. Amen. And how it works as it relates to sabotage. Now, the word sabotage is a secret scheme, we said, or plan of action intended to undermine a cause or effort. I'm going to take the time to recapitulate because we were absent from one another for a moment. Amen? So we said sabotage is a secret scheme. Secret by who, Pastor? By the devil. It's a secret scheme or plan of action intended to undermine, key word, a cause or effort. Now, this definition introduced us to another word. Remember that? And that word is what? Undermine. The word undermine means to wear away, as to wear away at the support. To wear away, as to wear away at the support. The word undermine also means to impair or weaken by imperceptible stages. We said the word now, imperceptible, means slight. It means gradual. It means subtle. It means unnoticed by the senses. In our last session, I took the time to talk to you about our teeth and your teeth and my teeth and our teeth. And we said our teeth is one of the strongest things in our body. But the thing that makes our teeth so strong is not necessarily the teeth itself, but what the teeth is surrounded with. Amen. It is surrounded with bone and it is surrounded with periodontium, which causes both soft and hard tissues to form around the teeth and then harden, praise the Lord. And we talked about now the importance of taking care of our teeth. I said, if we don't take care of our teeth, as strong as it might be, bacteria will find its way into the support of the teeth, the bone area. It will lodge itself beneath the gum line and begin to wear away Amen. At the system that makes the teeth strong. Watch this now. And it is usually slight, gradual, subtle, unnoticed by the senses. Watch this. And it is working whether we are aware of it or not. Now, that's how strife is. That's how strife is. Strife gets into an individual and, it be, and it's slight. It's gradual, it's subtle, it's unnoticed by the senses, and it begins to wear away at the support system. And so we're dealing with this strife thing. Now, we gave you a definition for strife. Remember that? We said strife, write this down if you don't have it. I'm reviewing, praise the Lord, I'm reviewing. Strife, so if I'm speaking a little fast, know that passage review. Strife is selfishness. Remember that? We also said strife is selfish ambition that leads to contention or conflict. Amen. It'll be on the screen. And then we said strife is angry or bitter disagreement over fundamental issues. Praise the Lord. Now, we began talking to you last time about 
the stages of strife. And, 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 and what Pastor said was that a lot of believers in the body of Christ uh, get derailed by strife. Amen. I mean, they're walking along. They're serving the Lord with gladness. They're coming before his presence with singing and they're loving their God. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, something happens between them and another person. And this bacteria begins to creep in. It's slight. It's subtle. It's gradual. Really, it's unnoticeable to the senses. And over time, it pulls, it creates a breach between two people. And, and when you talk about strife, people say, well, Pastor, I've heard about strife before. Uh, I've heard the word strife before. It's not a new thing to me. Well, I want to help you to understand tonight that most people who think they know about strife really don't understand strife on the level that they should. And, and I hear the Holy Ghost talking to me, so I'm going to talk to you. And, and listen to me. Pastor Mitchell and I, Pastor Yasmin Mitchell and I, we know what it's like to run away from strife. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We know what it's like not to take certain phone calls. Amen. Because we know the individual that's trying to reach us means us no good. That individual's only agenda is to create some level of strife Amen. Be be between us two, not my wife and I, but between us and them. Praise the Lord. And so because we understand that, we just don't take certain people's calls. Praise the Lord. You have to understand, I left a particular organization. And when I left this organization, there were a lot of people that had issues with me, underlining issues. And there was a lot of strife, but I recognized it. And I was able to navigate my wife and I around this strike because we understand it. We've had people to call and leave messages at the ministry saying, tell Pastor Mitchell, I need to speak with him. And, and, and because we knew what the conversation was about and that it would do nothing but create strife, we navigated our way around that situation. Pastor Mitchell, why did you do that? Well, we understand the damage that strife can do in a life. You lose God's favor. You lose God's benefits. Praise the Lord. We lose access to our Father because he doesn't hear us when we're not relating properly to other people in the body of Christ, other members. So don't minimize this. Now go to 2 Timothy uh, chapter 2 because I hear the Holy Ghost telling me to go there. Let me read this to you and then I'll go ahead and... Uh, We'll move on. Now, now watch this now. The Holy Spirit is a great teacher of the church. I don't belong in 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, but I hear the Holy Ghost telling me to go there now. Amen. I wanted to go there later, but I hear him now. So we go now. Praise the Lord. When the cloud moves, we move. Praise the Lord. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 23. Notice what it says. It says, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid. What does it say? Avoid knowing what? Knowing that they do what? Gender strife. Do you see that? So there are certain people, certain conversations, certain instances where you should move by your own volition, make a and make a conscious decision. Watch this, make an intelligent spiritual decision just not to engage. Because I've learned over the years if that if there's one thing Satan wants to do is get us all into some strife. And you know I'm right about that. I hear you saying, amen, Pastor, with people. And the reason why Satan wants to get, get us into strife and cause some of us to even riot is because the devil understand that this tool is extremely successful. Praise the Lord. So there... So I believe that there are many people in the body of Christ who are being sabotaged, listen, by this thing called strife. Pastor Mitchell, but many of us, we've heard of strife. How is it that it is so, why is it so important to the devil to use this tool? Why should we understand this thing about strife? And how do you know that we don't know all that we need to know about strife? I guarantee you, 
most people in the body of Christ do not understand strife. If they did, they wouldn't be so strifeful. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Much of the time, we minimize this thing. Amen. And there, there are four levels of strife. And most people get caught by the devil. Listen, because they only understand one level of strife. And we said the first level of strife was what? The obvious bickering, quarreling, fussing. Amen. Heated disagreements and fighting. But there's more to it. The second level of strife I gave you last week was clinging to personal opinions to the detriment of the group. Mm -hmm. And that's what Barnabas and, 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 and Paul was doing. Barnabas said, I want John Marks to come. And Paul says, listen, I know he's your cousin, but the last time he came with us, he abandoned us when we were ministering. Mm -hmm. He got tired and went back. So I'm not doing this anymore. And, and Barnabas said, this time around, I want to bring my cousin, John Marks, again. And Paul says, not so. Because if I'm going to go out to minister, I need people that can take a licking and keep on ticking. I don't need quitters surrounding me. I need people that will stand with me when they feel good, when they feel bad, when they're up, when they're down, when they're in or they feel out. No matter how they feel, I need people surrounding me that knows how to stand and haven't done all to stand. To stand there with their loins girded about with truth, not girded about with their emotions. Praise the Lord. Now, listen at this. Don't feel bad if you locate parts of you in this teaching. In fact, can I say this to you? If you locate part of you in this teaching, you should fall to your face and thank your God. Because God is trying to strengthen all of us. He's trying to bring us all to another level. He's trying to bring us to a place where we can be used by him in a greater way. And whether we want to admit it or not, every now and then we all feel like giving up. Praise the Lord. It comes with the turf. But I want to lovingly encourage you, stand. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And having done all to stand, stand. And this is what uh, Barnabas and, and, and Paul was doing. They were clinging to their own personal opinion to the detriment of the group. Married people do that all the time. Amen. I live in the intrigues of other people's issues. So I know it's like the council people who are bent on being right. And if it means tearing up the marriage, as long as they won, they feel they've accomplished something and it's really unwise. The third level of strife is not so obvious though. It is very subtle. And I gave it to you, and I'm going to give it to you again and then finish this point because this is where we left off. So the third level of strife is competition. Now, I want you to write this down if you don't have this. Competition, write this down, is self-righteousness. It is self-serving. It is self-promoting egos battling for preeminence and control. You want me to say that again? Self-righteousness, competition, listen, is self-righteousness, self-serving, self-promoting egos, battling for preeminence and control. And we see this all the time in the body of Christ. And it's amazing. People will come and say, Pastor Mitchell, I'm not in competition with anybody. I'm just serving the Lord. Just serving the Lord with gladness. Well, if you're serving the Lord with gladness, why are you in strife? Praise the Lord. Competition. If you are in competition with anybody in the church, at your home, on your job, if you are in competition anywhere in life, you, whether you know it or not, you are in strife. Praise the Lord. I gave you Mark chapter 10, 35, verse 35 through 41, where, where John and James and John came to Jesus. They cornered Jesus mm -hmm. on a quiet day and said, Lord, now listen to this. We know you're going to come into your kingdom eventually. And when you come into your kingdom, we want to sit one on the right and one on the left. And they got the ups on Jesus and all the disciples. And they said, let us sit one on the right and one on the left. And if you scroll down to verse 41, I believe it is, the Bible says, when the other 10 heard it, 
it created a conflict. And the reason why it created a conflict was because really in their hearts, they wanted to be the one to sit on the right and, and one on the left. Well, competition will always create conflict. Now go with me, please, to Luke chapter 22. Hurry, Luke chapter 22, because I, I need to cover some ground tonight, because somebody's coming out of strife. I'm telling you, when you come out of strife, the devil is going to be mad. You want to know why? Because he no longer can trick you with strife, because you understand the four levels of strife, and you're going to be looking out for them, much like Sister Mitchell and I, look out for these people who are bent on strife, and we just don't return calls because we understand strife. And praise the Lord. You can be beating tambourines and shouting in the spirit and dancing in the spirit and falling out and be in strife. Much of the time, the church look past what's really going on on the inside, and we're so caught up by what's going on on the outside. We're so big on outward appearances that we're not able to perceive and properly to discern that some people are in strife with them or with you. And pastor wants you to help you tonight. Amen. With the help of the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 22. Is that what I said? Notice what it says in Luke chapter 22 and verse 24. And there was also a strife among them. Talking about the disciples. Which of them, listen, should be accounted the greatest? Mm -hmm. Look at that. That's Luke chapter 22 and verse 24. He says, and there was also a strife among the disciples. That's the them. And the strife was this. Which of them should be accounted the greatest competition? Competition, breathe strife. Competition will put people who love God against one another. Look out for competition. When you find yourself in competition on any level with anyone, watch this. You're not heading into strife. You're not on your way to strife. You are already in strife. It's just silent strife. It's just strife that the other party know not of. Amen. Watch this. And not only does the other party know of the strife that you're in, watch this, you don't know. Think about that. Come on, think with Pastor for a while. Think about that. Not only does the other party know you're in strife with them, unless they're spiritually adept enough to sense your spirit, amen, but you don't know you're in strife because Satan has hidden it because we don't understand the levels of strife, because we only see strife as the obvious bickering and fussing and fighting and the contention up front and the arguing, we think it starts and stops there, but no, 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 no. Strife goes beyond that, and there are people in the body of Christ who will be in strife with you, and they don't know they're in strife with you, and if you're not spiritually adept enough, you won't know that they're in strife with you, and you keep trying to figure out how come they keep falling out with you. Maybe I need to do something different. The reality is most of the times you don't need to do anything different. The change is not with you. The change is inside of them, and we're going to do that we're going to talk about this a little bit later when we talk about assessing ourselves. Amen. Because most times we don't assess what's going on in us. We're so busy pointing at other folk. So it's those people. It's them people. Because of them. Because of them. And I've been there. Praise the Lord. So I'll just eat the first slice of this pie. If you'll agree to eat the rest and be honest. Yes. Praise the Lord. So, so I've learned over the years to be very careful of this thing called competition. Changing lives is a phenomenal ministry. Thank God for radio and television and several thousand members and income and increase. Thank God for all of that. But there are ministries that are bigger. There are ministries that are doing more. Praise the Lord. Yes, we're feeding people. Yes, we're doing certain things to bless the community. But there are ministries that are doing more. And if, and if I'm not careful as your pastor, I can get into secret strife. So secret strife with men, good men and women around the globe that, that has done nothing to me but, but be wonderful and kind and gracious. 
And the only reason I'll be in strife with them is not because they're so bad, but it is because of my own immaturity. Am I helping somebody? And Satan doesn't want you to learn this. He wants you to minimize this conversation and continue to grow old chronologically, but stay immature spiritually. And that's a crime because the spirit world is the parent world. This natural physical body, the Bible says for this light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding, exceeding eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things that are seen, that's natural. Because the things that are seen, they are what? They're temporary. That's what temporal means. But the things which are not seen in the spirit realm, they are eternal. So the spirit world is the parent world. Amen. And God will continue to bless us, and he's going to bless us, but only to the degree that you and I grow up spiritually. Never mind how long you've been in the church, beloved. Praise the Lord. I love you to life, so let pastor be himself. Amen. Because I'm teaching you from a pure, pure place. I don't want anything from you except to grow you up in the things of God so you can walk in those things that only you can walk in. Your eyes have not seen. And your ears have not heard it, not entered into your heart. The things that God has prepared, past tense, it's already there for them that love it. And nobody can access what God has your name on by way of sticker. God's got things in storage for you, which your name stapled to it. And it don't make any sense to be in competition with anybody else, in strife with anybody else, because they can't get your stuff out. Of storage. Only you can get them out. But it takes some growing up. God does not release his blessings to babies. That's why he says, be transformed. That's why Paul said that. I beg you, by the mercies of Christ, that you present that body. Show up and be taught by your pastor. Present that body. A living sacrifice, even though you don't feel like it. But pull yourself up in your bed. Pop up some pillars and hear what God has to say because you're presenting your body a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world's thinking, but be transformed. Metamorphosis, where we're going from, from an immature form now to a mature form. And be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? Because it is the only way that God can prove what is the good, perfect, and acceptable will for you by blessing you. It is not the will of God for you to live and die with no peace. It is not the will of God for you to live and die and not have any joy. It is not the will of God for you to live and die and be broke all the days of your life. It is not the will of God. For you to be saved but unhappy. The devil is a lie. I intend to grow up in the body of Christ and I want to access everything that God has in storage for me. I'm not worried about Bishop Noel Jones and Jakes and different people. Thank God for all the wonderful men and women across the globe, but I'm not focused on them. I'm focused on what God has for me because what God has for me it's only for me. And what God has for you is only for you. So we have to look out for competition. The Bible said there's strife between the disciples because they want to know who he's going to name as the greatest. And we do this in the church all the time. Not a change in lives. I'm talking about other churches. Praise the Lord. You're a word church. Amen. You're mature. Praise the Lord. All right. Go to, with me to 3 John. Is that what I said? 3 John 9. 3 John. Look at what it says in verse 9. I'm going to read from verse 9 down to 11. You have it? 3 John 9. It reads, I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes who loveth to have the preeminence, underline the word preeminence, among them receiveth us not. We're going to pull on that later. Verse 10, wherefore, 
If I come, listen to this, I will remember his deeds. Underline the word deeds because there's a behavioral pattern here that pastor wants to teach you about. Which he doeth, pratting against us, listen, with malicious words. That's not a good deed. Watch this. And not content therewith, neither doth he himself receiveth the brethren. Watch this. Not only does he not receive the brethren himself, but the Bible says, and watch this, and forbiddeth them that would. Know anybody like that? And casteth them out of the church. And casteth them out of the church. Verse 11. Beloved, follow not that which is evil. Now, I know we think church people can't be, be evil, but let pass to help you. Church folk can be very evil. Praise the Lord. But that which is what? Good. He that doeth good, watch this, is of God. But he that, what, doeth evil hath not seen. <laughs> hath not seen God. Do you see that? And this is a very, very important passage of Scripture when we start talking about strife. Because there's some wisdom here that we need to pull out. Amen. The Bible says that this man was a leader in the church. And the Bible says, beloved, that he had a desire for the preeminence. The Bible says that he was not accepting people in the church. Did you hear that? But not only was he not accepting people in the church, he would encourage other people to not accept people coming into the church. And the Bible says he was putting people out of the church. Amen. Now, we don't physically pick people up and pull them out of the church. But our behavior can run them out. Amen. The Bible says I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes who loveth to have the preeminence, we'll deal with that in a moment, among them receiveth us not. Now, let's deal with that now. The word preeminence, write this down because I think it'll help you. The word preeminence means, you ready? Ambitious of distinction. Mm -hmm. It means to be fond of being first. You have that? It's on the screen. So, so this leader loved to have the preeminence. He, he loved to be first. The Amplifier says he likes to take the lead among them and put himself first. That's interesting. Taylor's translation says, he loves to push himself forward. The contemporary English version says he likes to be the number one leader. And the Bible says he loved to have the preeminence. And in verse 10, I want to talk to you about verse 10 now. Look with me at verse 10. Mm -hmm. It says, wherefore, if I come, the word of God said, I will remember his deeds, in other words, his behavior, which he doeth, watch this, pratting against us with malicious words. Now, the church of our Lord Jesus Christ, the body of Christ, is filled with people who love to gossip. Filled. There are too many gossipers in the body of Christ. There are too many people that are filled with malicious words. And the Bible says, and not, watch this, and not content therewith. In other words, there are too many people in the body of Christ who are functioning, but they're not content with where they are. They don't understand that God has placed them where they are, and they should function where they are with a pure heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
The Bible says, not only did he have malicious words, the Bible says he was not content therewith, neither doth he himself receive the brethren. Watch this. He didn't receive the brethren. And furthermore, he went further and forbiddeth them that would. In other words, he wouldn't receive the brethren. And, and if someone new came to the church and was trying to make a friend in the church, he would come along and say, don't talk to her. Don't talk to him. We don't know where they come from, or they're coming from this, or they came from here, or this is what I heard about them. And he would discourage others from connecting with people. The Bible said, and cast them out of the church through his behavior. And the Bible says, this is evil. And there are plenty of people in the body of Christ. Can I teach a while? I was talking to one of my friends in ministry not too long ago, and he couldn't figure out why his church wasn't growing. And as he continued to talk to me, I figured out why his church wasn't growing. I said, part of the reason why your church is not growing is, is because you have dysfunctional members. They are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, but that's it. Beyond being saved, baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost, they have no wisdom. So every time you get some new growth, they run out the new growth before you get a chance to go ahead and scale that fish. Every time new fish come in, they run them out because, because you got people who don't want to give up being the lead singer. New people come in, and the moment you hear they can sing well, now I have a problem with this person because you're afraid to lose your spot. This is all across the country in so many churches in our land in the body of Christ, and it is a tragedy. This is why there's so much infighting in the churches, because everybody wants to have the preeminence. It's really not about coming in and getting people saved and getting people cleaned up and teaching them the word of God and growing them up and, 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 and placing them in a position where God can get the best out of them, helping them to reach their destiny. No, 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 no. It's about me keeping my spot. It's about me staying in my role. I don't want anybody coming in to do what I'm doing now because what I'm doing now, I like what I'm doing. And number two, I don't want anybody in my spot. I don't want to share it with anybody. I don't want anybody to be in partnership with me about it. Never mind what's best for the ministry. This is what I want. And because I have to share it with others, now I got to, now I got to get along with other people in this area. And now I can't be seen as much. Now I have a problem. That's not healthy. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I got to say this with a smile because I don't want you to think I'm mad at you. I'm mad at that devil that is deceiving you. Listen, you are in strife. You're not getting ready to go into strife. You're not heading into strife. You are already in strife because you're trying to secure your spot. And if you can't say amen, just go ahead and say, ouch, that's good too. And I thank God for this. Now, don't feel bad about it. If you locate yourself anywhere in the teaching here, you must remember this is why God sent you to Change in Lives Christian Center. God sent you here to go to another level. If this word is finding you where you live, you should say, Lord, thank you so much for my man of God. Thank you for using him. You're shining a bright light in a dark place in me, and I need to fix this. Because man look at the outward appearance, but God, beloved, God, family, he sees our heart. Now, let me move on. Let's talk about the fourth level of strife. You ready? The fourth level, the first level was what? Was what? The obvious bickering, fussing, and carrying on. What's number two? Clinging to what? To personal what? Opinions to the detriment of the group. Number three is what? Competition. Here's the fourth. The fourth level of strife is angry undercurrents. Now, level four is very subtle. I mean very subtle. If you're not paying attention, you won't even know what's going on with folks. And you really can't blame people because really, much of the time, family, they don't know what's going on with themselves. 
But let's talk about this fourth level of strife, with this, which is angry undercurrents. Angry undercurrents is hidden bitterness and resentment. Angry undercurrents is silence. It is no words spoken. Amen. It is just a bad attitude. Do you have that? Write that quickly because I got to move. I got to move. Angry undercurrents is hidden bitterness and resentment. Angry undercurrents is silence. Pastor Mitch, you mean to tell me that some people who are silent are in strife? Yes! It is silence sometimes, no words spoken. It is just a bad attitude coupled with the silence. Let me go further. Angry undercurrents represents a person. Listen to me. This person is bitter but won't say anything. I hear the Holy Ghost talking to some people already. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Angry undercurrents is withdrawal without or with a weak explanation. Angry undercurrents. Praise the Lord. You'd be surprised how many believers are being seduced by strife in this way. Amen. Angry undercurrents, I'm listening to the Holy Ghost while I'm teaching, is a refusal to support anymore. It's a refusal to speak to. And we have to look out for that. Now, Let's look at, let's, and let's talk about <clears throat> the destructiveness of strife. Go with me in your Bibles, please, to James, I hear you, Lord, chapter 3. James chapter 3. Most believers are being derailed. Destinies are being derailed by this thing called strife, and the folk who are being derailed don't even know it because most of us only understand one level of strife. But the Holy Spirit is revealing to us tonight that there are other levels of strife and we must pay attention to this lest Satan get an advantage of us. Amen. James 3, notice what it says in verse 13. It says, who is a wise man now and endued with knowledge among you? He asks a question. He says, let him shew out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Amen. James says, who is spiritual at Changing Lives Christian Center? Who's, who's the spiritual ones among us? He says, you'll be able to tell who they are based on how they speak. You'll be able to tell who they are based on their humility. Greek word for humility is humus. It simply means dirt or earth. And I believe it's that way because God wants us to remember that without him, we ain't much. Bad English, good theology. Without him, we're simply not much. And he wants us all to remember, me included, that at the end of the day, we're nothing but some dirt. And one day we'll just be a lump of dirt. Praise the Lord. Notice what it says in verse 14. He says, but if you have bitter envying and strife, there's that word, where? In your hearts, glory not 
and lie not against the truth. He says, if you say you're spiritual, if you say you are mature, if you say you're what God needs you to be, then why is there strife in your life? Why all the strife if you are mature? James says, if you say you're mature and you are in strife, you are lying against the truth. Do you see that? Verse 15 says, this wisdom now descended not from where? Above. This is not godly wisdom, but it is what? Earthly, sensual, devilish. We're going to deal with that in a moment. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion, and every evil work, you've heard Pastor exegete this over and over again. For those of you that are joining me live on Facebook for the first time, that verse is very, very important. If you're not careful with that verse, you'll pick up demonic spirits. Verse 16 makes it clear. For where envy and strife is, there is what? Confusion. God is never the author of any level of confusion. You know when somebody in your church is out of order when they are spewing confusion out of their mouth. When confusion leaves a person's lips, God is never authorizing that. There's always a demonic spirit behind that. The Bible says, and every evil work which meant, which speaks to us about when you are in strife with your neighbor, you literally open up the coat of your life to the devil and you say, inhabit me, possess me. And when you really study this verse out, which frightens me every time I do, what, the, what it really means is you are opened up to every evil spirit and you don't choose the spirit you get. So you can walk away from this strife thing with any kind of spirit because you didn't get a chance to decide which one you pick up. So hell decided which demon they're going to release into your spirit. This is why you can see people who've been spiritual for years, being in their place for years, loving God for years, functioning for years, automatically just switch overnight practically, and nobody can understand why. And if you ask them, they won't point a finger at themselves, and they're not wrong. They don't know that they're in strife. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So they perceive that it is other people, but it's really not your brother or your sister. It is you that is in need of prayer. Praise the Lord. And if you locate yourself anywhere in this teaching, say, God, thank you for my man of God, because you sent him into my space so that I wouldn't be left where I am. But watch this. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. This word pure means unmixed. It is not an alloy. It's not some timing. It's not up one day, down the next day, in one day, out the next day. It's not an alloy. It is pure. It is consistent. It is predictable. It can be counted on. But the wisdom that is from above is first, keyword. Thank you, Holy Ghost. But the wisdom that is from above is first, pure. It is unmixed. Then what? Peaceable. It is gentle and easy to be entreated. In other words, you don't have to be perfect to be around it. When you're around people like this that have this kind of spirit, you don't have to be a perfect person. They will give you room to be flawed. Full of mercy. If you apologize, they will say you're forgiven. Let's go on and see what the end's going to be. The Bible says, and what? Good fruits without partiality. That means we love everybody. I wish I had time tonight. I know church people who don't like white people who don't like black people, who don't like Mexican people, who don't like different types of people. We have people who claim to be saved but prejudiced. It is impossible for you to be a mature Christian and be prejudiced. It's impossible for you to be a mature Christian, spirit-filled, walking in the wisdom of the word of God and secretly 
dislike another individual or person because of color of skin or anything else. It's impossible. Impossible. God help me tonight. Can I go further with this? You're not, you're not mature if you're prejudiced. You're not mature if you're not easy to easily to be entreated. You're not mature. Amen. This is why changing lives, we accept everybody here at Changing Lives Christian Center. No partiality. We're not, we're not condoning people's sin or behavior, but we're going to love all people. If Jesus was on the planet, which he is in us, but if he was physically here in a body, Jesus would love every kind of man, the white man, the black man, the red man, the Asian man, the Indian man. He would love the lesbians. He would hug the lesbians. He would love the homosexuals. He would wrap his arms around them and squeeze his creation who was flawed. He would not shun them. He would not run them away. He wouldn't say, you can't come to me. Because he knows that, 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 that he is the only one that can help them. He would never run them away, but yet the church is so caught up in partiality that we choose who we accept. We choose who we forgive. We choose, but Jesus is not like that. He would love everybody. So a changing last Christian center. Since the buck stops with me, and we don't vote on things like this, everybody can come to this church and feel loved with the love of God. And we're going to love them and keep on loving them. And we're going to love them and teach them, love them and train them, love them and coach them, love them and encourage them, love them and wrap our arms around them with the love of Jesus until they begin to accept the word of our Lord. Do you understand what I'm saying? Anything else is not from God. And the Bible says, and, and without hypocrisy. I wish I had more time to pull on this because there's some things I want to get out of this because I want you to understand what I'm saying to you. The Bible said that other wisdom is earthly. That word earthly means fleshy. <laughs> it's fleshy. It's, it's, it's driven by the senses. We're operating by this and not the inner man. Amen. Earthly wisdom says this. I promote myself. I'm not interested in looking out for your best interest. I'm going to gossip about you, talk about you, make you look bad. When you function, I don't show up because I don't want you to see me supporting you. That's immature. But thank God you're going to change your lives because we're going we're gonna to snatch that right out of you with the help of the Holy Ghost. It's earthly. When you're earthly, you're in competition. You're saying, I support me. I stand with me. Amen. Even if it means I have to step on you to get to the top, I'll step on you. I'll demonize you. I'll gossip about you. I'll say whatever I have to say to make you look bad and somehow cause me to come out in a, a better light. That's earthly. James said it's also sensual. Amen. It's fleshy. It's sensual. It means a person who is body ruled. Somebody is ruled by their senses, ruled by their body. And listen to this. It's flat out devilish, according to James. James says that this wisdom is devilish. Now look at pastor. Everybody look at me. Look at me. Whenever you decide to stop walking in the love of God. Whenever you decide to stop walking in forgiveness, you will start hearing voices that you believe is God. Did you hear that? This is why you run into people who are off course. And what is the first thing they said to you? The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. 
That's a lie. First of all, God does not talk to people who are in strife. Why? Because your life is out of order. I've got scripture to prove it. The Bible says, let all things be done how? Decently and in order. All things mean what? All things. All means all. There's nothing ambiguous about that. That's pretty clear. So when we violate any order, when we are outside of the order of God, God is no longer, watch this, obligated to communicate with us. Because anything that is out of order, and I mean anything, aim this principle at any area in life. Anything that is out of order, God is not obligated to get involved in it. God said, I won't touch it till you move by your own volition and get yourself back into the right posture. And it's devilish, James says. But most of the times we think it's God. I'm amazed that people, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and told me, I'm not de don't deal with none of them people. Wow. That's not God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, is, that is not God. Peter came to us, how oft my brother's sin should I forgive him? Jesus said, let me put it in a nutshell. Every time he does you wrong, you let him go. There's a reason for that answer. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Scripture says, with as much that lies within you, live what? Peaceably with all men. Why is the Holy Spirit encouraging us as believers at all costs to stay away from strife? Because strife is devilish and it will sabotage. Watch this. And it is Satan's favorite instrument. He loves it because he gets people to sabotage themselves. Watch this without them even knowing that they're sabotaging them, them, themselves because they don't perceive what they're doing as wrong. Am I helping somebody tonight? Are you going to another level? Is this teaching blessing your life? Are you going to look out for, for strife? Because it is a real problem. Amen, 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 amen. Whenever a Christian refuses to operate in love, he'll start to hear voices, and it will not be God's. Amen. Now, Mark eleven twenty three says, when you stand praying, forgive. You know what that means. There's a reason for that. Amen. Psalm 66 and verse 18 says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. That's a problem. So we need to get past this. Amen? Amen. I like what it said on the B section. I'm so puzzled by it. I love it. Every time I read it, I, I get goosebumps. The Bible said this, the, the, this wisdom of God that pastors teaching on is first pure. We said that. Then we said it's peaceable, right? Mm -hmm. That word peaceable means peace loving. It means bridge building. It means not divisive, not divisive. Amen. When we are operating in the wisdom of God, his wisdom will bring us together and not divide us. It goes on to say that his wisdom is not only pure, which is unmixed, not only peaceable, but it is gentle. That word gentle means considerate courteous, patient, respectful, amen, easy to be entreated, means willing to listen. If I'm fussing with you and you want to talk to me about it, if I'm having a fight with my wife, if we're fussing, the Bible says we should be easy to be entreated. We should want to get together. Let's talk about this. You're fussing with another brother in the church or in the church or another sister, or another individual on your job, or in your home. So let's get together and talk about this. Easy to be entreated. It means willing to listen, willing to yield. The Living Bible says, allows discussion and willing to yield. Philip's translation says, it's approachable. The Amplified Version says, willing to yield to reason. The RSV version says, open to reason. 
Knox translation says, ready to be convinced. Isn't that good? This is how we should live and function as believers. The Bible says it's full of mercy. So you don't have to be perfect without partiality, no prejudice. Am I helping somebody? Now, oh Lord, I've got to move. Am I helping you? All right. See, you're going to another level. <clears throat> And I'm talking to somebody that's watching me tonight. You've tuned in to Facebook for the very first time. God sent you here. And he sent you here because he wants to expose you to your next place, your next level. We didn't connect by accident. God is very purposeful in everything that he does. Away with luck. There is no luck. Happenstance. Just so happens. No, 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 none of that. God knows how to manipulate time and space for the purpose of divine hookups. And somebody's online with me tonight, and you're getting blessed by this teaching. God sent you here to go to another level. Praise the Lord. And some of you are going to another level. You've heard some of this, but God has given me more wisdom for this teaching. I've added so much more to this because pastor has grown. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And I'm telling you that as your pastor, Pastor Yasmin and I, my dear wife and I, we run from strife. Not because of fear of other people, but we know the damaging effects that strife will have on us if we get involved in it. Amen? Amen. So don't be a hypocrite, as James says. In fact, the word hypocrite in the Greek means to wear a mask. Don't be one way with people in their face and be another way when they're out of your sight. You're wearing a mask. Amen. Now, strife has three doors. Write these down. Strife has three doors. And I want to get to this. I got so much to cover. Uh, you have to bear with me. This is going to take a while. Because after that, then I got three things to know about righteous judgment. And I don't have, think I'm going to have time for all that. But I'll try to get these three doors into you. Strife has three doors. Take good notes. Your prosperity is, 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 is at stake. Your destiny is that state. Don't mess up what God placed you in. Amen. Amen. What has pastor been teaching over the years? I've taught you over the years to love everybody. Love those that love you. Love those that don't love you. Amen. What have I said over the years? Never fall out with people. If there's going to be a falling out, let them fall out with you. You keep your righteousness intact. You can't make everybody love you. You can't make everybody like you. Amen. But thanks be to God that I don't have to please everybody. The Bible says when a man's ways pleases the Lord. Now we're in business. Now, strife has three doors. Are you ready? Number one, the mind. I'll give them to you and then we'll cut these up. Number one, the mind. Number two, the mouth. And then number three, the heart. Strife has three doors. Number one, the mind. Number two, the mouth. Number three, the heart. Praise the Lord. Now, the mind. The mind. Transformed by the renewing of the mind. My mind. Listen to me, family. Your mind, your thought life must be managed and controlled. Go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Let's see if I can pull this out. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Am I, help, am I helping somebody? 2 Corinthians chapter 10. You're going to another level. This teaching is taking you to another level. Because it's not always Some external issues that derail us. Sometimes it's us. Our immaturity derails us. Doesn't mean we're immature across the board. It just simply means that we lack some wisdom in some areas. Don't let Satan cause you, put you in a position where you are rioting. Amen. Because your thought life must be managed and what? Controlled. 
Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Is that what I said? Notice what it says in verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, Paul says, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Amen. So notice that the Bible says, I am to cast down imaginations. The Greek word there means thoughts that exhaust themselves against the will and the knowledge of God. The Greek word there means this, not to exalt yourself above God's wisdom. I've got more for you concerning that. The Bible says that we must cast down these imaginations and these high thoughts. Somebody said, Pastor Mitchell, what is a high thought? A high thought is anything that goes against what God word, God's word has said. Did you catch that? It is, in, in layman's language, reasonings that exalts against what the word says. Webster's definition of the word imagination is the power, listen, of forming mental, write this down, images of what is not present. It's not on the screen. So let me give that to you again. I hear God talking to me, so I'm processing what God is saying to me and talking to you at the same time. But write this down. Imagination is the power of forming mental images of what is not present. Do you understand that? That simply means mental pictures. Now, understand this, family. Understand this, if we don't, listen, if you and I minimize this, if we don't manage the thoughts of our minds, we will develop, listen, mental pictures of people that will impact the way we relate to them. Now, this is important. This is important. This is why I'm, I'm after all the gossips. See, a gossiper really comes from the devil. They're being used by the devil, and they don't know it. Because a gossiper, listen, a gossiper, when a gossiper speaks into your spirit, that gossiper's words creates a mental image in the person who's listening. Watch this. And if the mental image that's being formed in the mind of the person that is listening is negative, then that person receives the negative imagery of that person and form an opinion, an unjust opinion of that person. Watch this. Without ever having any facts. Let me see if I can make it a little brighter for you. <clears throat> it is possible for you to hate someone you've never met. How is that, Pastor Mitchell? Well, if your friend comes to you and tells you negative things about that sister over there before you ever had a chance to meet her, talk to her, maybe go to lunch with her, amen. It is possible for what that sister said to you 
to damage you so severely concerning that person that by the time you physically are introduced to that person, you all ha you have already decided, I don't like you. Do you see that? How did that happen? Imagination. Root word is image. Gossipers are dangerous. Listen to what I'm teaching tonight. Gossipers are dangerous to the body of Christ. And it's really sad because most of us are not spiritually mature enough to say, oh, no, I don't want that in my spirit. Whatever the issue is between you and them is between you and them. You need to take that to God and work that out in prayer. But I don't want you preempting me. I don't want you tainting me. I don't want you coloring my feelings towards this individual. Did you hear that? Now watch this. Let me ask you a question. Where did the strife take place? In the mind. I got to move. Number two is the mouth. Lord, help us. Go to Proverbs 18 and verse 7. Hurry. Am I helping you? And I'm trying not to rush through certain parts of this. And I want to talk slow because I want my church to grow. I know you're grown, folks. I know you're mature. But I want to mature you to another level. And I also want to wolf-proof you so that you can spot a devil when you hear one. Amen. You can spot a devil when you hear one. Notice I didn't say you can spot a devil when you see one. Pastor says you can spot a devil when you hear one. Amen. We have to learn to look past familiar faces and recognize that Satan is using this individual. In the same way, Jesus looked at Peter. He said, I have got to go to the cross. And Peter said, you will not die. You, you're going to live. And Peter said, and Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me. Jesus called Peter Satan. Now, was Peter Satan? No. But in that moment, Jesus' earlobes picked up Satan's verbiage. So Jesus had the ability to look past what he was seeing and not make a determination who was talking to him based on what he saw, but based on what he heard. You and I have to do that or else you will be derailed along the way. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 7. I know I'm helping somebody. Now listen to this. Because we're talking about three doors. Strife has three doors of entrance. There are three doors that strife enters to, through. Number one is what? The mind. Number two is the mouth. Listen to, what, listen to what it says in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 7. But let's look at verse 4 first. The Bible says in verse 4, the words of a man's mouth are as deep waters. Pastor, stop here. Don't minimize what I'm teaching tonight. Don't say, Pastor, they're just talking. I have, I, I'm not listening to them. I'm not paying attention to them. It's not going to affect me. No, you're deceived. The Bible said, be not deceived. The text starts out by saying, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Not God is not mocked. Be not deceived. You're being deceived. It says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he reap. The text, the tenor of that text is saying to you that you cannot handle negative verbiage. If you allow negative verbiage to be sown into this spirit, into this heart, we're going to deal with that in a moment, it's going to produce fruit. So, so listen to what I'm reading here. Listen to how powerful words are, which is the reason why Pastor Yaz and I, we don't even do certain things as it relates to uh, allowing people to pour into us. We're very careful 
We love all of our members. But when a member calls and says, Pastor, we want to, I want to tell you something. I got something to tell you. I got something you need to know. I got something you need to investigate. I, 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 I got something that you need to hire CSIs to look into because there's some things here going on that's not right. We lovingly rebuke all those people and tell them, go pray for your sister. Don't spread it. And don't fill me up with it. Praise the Lord. First of all, I'm not a detective. I don't have the time to run down leads to see if you've got a case or not. Love you. I love you. I really do love you. But don't be bringing me no bad news. Okay? Love you, though. Did I say I love you? I love you. But if you bring me bad news, I'm going to tell you, I love you. But don't spread that. Go pray about that. Because I'm not going to go investigate it. I'm not called to investigate. Amen. That's not part of my role. All right. Okay. All right. Sermon was going real good. I just made you mad, huh? All right. I love you anyway. I know you love me better. Verse 4. The words of a man's mouth, listen to this, are as deep waters. And the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. <laughs> That's deep. Brooks can cut and create paths and open up channels. Words do that to your spirit. Be careful. Verse 5. It is not good to accept the person of the wicked. Don't accept the gossip's chatter. What the gossip is doing is not righteous. That is wickedness. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. And it says in verse 5, it is not good to accept the person of the wicked, to overthrow the righteous judgment. Don't let their words affect your decision making. That's what that is saying. Verse 6 says, a fool's lips enter into contention, and his mouth calleth for strokes. It can incite you to riot. A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare, watch this, of his soul. Not only yours, but his soul. His soul is already snared, and as he departs, and as he as he spills this wickedness, impart this wickedness into you, this, this, this river will begin to open up channels of unrighteousness in you and will cause you to no longer be pure, which is unmixed. Now you're mixed with purity and impure foolishness through gossip. Gossip is demonic. It keeps you from being pure, unmixed. Do you understand that? That's important. Let me give you the third one, then I'll quit. The third door is the heart. And God help us with our heart. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, who can know it? The Amplified Version says, it is exceedingly perverse and corrupt and severely mortally sick. Who can know it, perceive it, understand it, be acquainted with it? The Living Translation says something at the tail end of this. It says this, who really knows how bad it is? You have to be careful. Did you hear what I just said? Because your destiny is at stake. Proverbs drives us home. Proverbs 4, verse 23 says, keep thy heart. Now, we can teach on that first word, keep. That word keep means to protect it. 
When people begin to open their mouth, discern quickly. This is going to be good for the heart or bad for the heart. Discern quickly. Quickly. Keep thy heart. Keep thy heart. With all diligence. That word diligence means consistency. You are always protecting the heart. You're not swift to just listen to everything. No. You're selective. Because you don't want to be an alloy. alloy. You want to be pure. Unmixed. So it says, keep thy heart with all consistency, for out of it are the issues of life. Another translation says, for out of your heart are the forces of life. Your anointing, your power, your unction, everything concerning what God is going to do in your life is going to come right out of your heart. This is why. If there's anything Satan wants to attack, he's after that heart. Uh, many times, he's after the mind because they are connected. You have to be careful because strife is Satan's favorite instrument of sabotage, mainly because people are so ignorant to the deadliness of it and they don't understand the levels of it. They don't know how broad strife is. They don't know how deep strife is. Many believers don't even understand how strife gets inside of them. They only see the obvious bickering and the murmuring and the fighting. But pastors teaching you in depth about strife because this is Satan's favorite tool. Don't minimize what your man of God is teaching you because your destiny is connected to your godly wisdom and understanding. And you don't want to get in your, your right place in God and not have godly wisdom. You don't want to get into that space and not have the word of God, the wisdom of the word of God in you. Because even if you get some money, even when you get your peace and your joy and your contentment and you're living the blessed life, Satan is coming to try to sabotage the thing. And if you don't understand strife, he will use you to ruin you. Now, next time, we're going to pick this up on Sunday. When we put this up on Sunday, I want to talk to you about some things you need to know about righteous judgment. And I'm going to tie the two in together. And not only am I going to tie them in together, I'm going to show you what you need to do to make good godly decisions, excuse me, and choices for your life. And I'm going to show you how to keep yourself pure. Amen. Because, see, we're saved and sanctified filled with the Holy Ghost. But as we walk through this life, contaminants, attaches itself to us. We don't want it to attach itself to us, but we work around people who are not in right standing with God. In other words, we live in a fallen world. And every now and then the mud of this world, the raindrops of this world, the puddles of the, this world, the spills of this world splashes up on our garments. And, and we need to know how to cleanse ourselves internally on an ongoing basis, so that strife, this bacteria, which is working against us, whether we can see it or not, so we know how to self-clean our teeth, self-clean our spirit, self-clean our emotions. Very important. Don't miss Sunday. And if you know somebody that needs a good word church to go to, dial them up. Email them, call them, text them, let them know. Pastors teaching on strife, the instrument of sabotage. They go, oh, I know about strife. Tell them, no, you don't, baby. No, you don't, sweetie. You, you, you don't have strife yet. You may know how to spell it, but I promise you, you don't understand it, the depths of it. Tell them to tune in. I promise it'll be a blessing to you and to them with the help of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. All right. Did you get something out of tonight? Yes. All right. You got some godly wisdom. That's a blessing. All right. Love all of you. Pastor Yasmin and I were praying for all of you. Continue to do what you're doing. Continue. My leaders, love you guys so very, very much. You guys are phenomenal. Love each and every one of you. Our church is better 
because of all of you. For all of you that are functioning and you've got groups and you're talking to people online, I love all of you. Keep loving on the members. Amen. Make sure you keep God first. Praise the Lord. Keep the main thing, the main thing. Let's keep loving each other, encouraging one another. Amen. All right, Pastor Yasmin, I love you, but I, I want to get somebody saved. Somebody's online tonight. You've not made Jesus Lord of your life yet. Let me tell you something. Jesus is coming soon. He can come by the time I finish praying. Jesus is coming. Amen. He is coming. Quickly, he's coming. Amen. But because we must occupy until he comes, we're going to continue to occupy. But at the end of every broadcast, I want to give somebody a chance to get saved. So if you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, close your eyes right now. Repeat this prayer from your heart. Say, Father, forgive me. I repent right now. Forgive me of all of my sins. For your word says if I would confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus paid the price for my sin and that you raised him up from the dead. You said you would forgive me and you would save me. Save me right now. I give over my entire life to you. In Jesus' name, receive me into your kingdom now. Amen. If you have repeated that prayer, you've started your process. You're in the body of Christ. The Bible says all of heaven rejoices over one sinner that repents. And you just did that. So as pastors rejoice in here, thank God for you. Heaven is also rejoicing with you. Amen. All right. Love each and every one of you. Raise your hands for the blessing. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon each and every one of you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May he give you peace in your home, in your business, in your marriage, and everything that your hands touch. May the favor of our Lord Jesus Christ rest on you in every way. All of God's people say, I receive it. Now listen, if you're online with me tonight, you want to become a member. You can go to the website tonight. Pastor Mitchell, I love what I heard. I feel the spirit of God. I hear, I feel like God is ministering to me. I think I want to become a member of this church. Well, go to the website right now, clccministries.com. It's on your screen, clccministries.com. Simply give us four pieces of information, and we will accept you as a member of Changing Lives Christian Center. Pastor Mitchell and I will begin the process of praying for you daily and covering you. If that's too difficult for you, go to your cell phone right now. You can become a member right now by simply picking up your cell phone and dialing 718-218-2610. 718-218-2610. Give us that information and you can become a member right now. We love each and every one of you. Continue to be blessed. I'll see you on Sunday.
Christian Center, 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 Christian